G'day dickheads, Vaping Bogan, back again for another Dinky Die review. Hope you're all doing good as gold. Got a tasty little mechanical device to check out today from Russia with love. Shout out to the late Sean Connery, RIP mate. This is from RCM or Russian Custom Mods. And uh, yes, it is all the way from Russia. It's called the Boneville. <laughs> no, it's actually probably pronounced Bonneville. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it reads kind of like Boneville. Let's go to fucking Boneville, ladies. I'll take you there. <laughs> no, but seriously, it is a really nice little fucking 21700 mechanical tube mod. I've got the Barrage RDA sitting atop here from Vaping with Thesis. Shout out to you, mate. Still loving this little single coil. And I tell you what, how's the matching match action going on there? Black down the bottom, fading into a bit of silver. We've got the black Barrage with this uh, lovely heat sink fin action matching up perfectly. And the drip tip, if you're wondering, comes from RNV Designs over in Indonesia. And uh, I think this little setup, definitely one of my favorite matchy match combos for the year. It also looks quite lightsaber-ish, so maybe the Star Wars fans will get into this one, but uh, a great little fucking mech. I've got a 0.17 ohm uh, alien in here. As I said, it's a single coil RDA, the barrage. Let's take it for a little rip -a -roo. Great performance as you come to expect from RCM. The switch is basically the same that we've seen with their more recent uh, tube mods. Really, really nice uh, throw to it. And the same design they've done in the past where you can actually uh, take out a little ring in here and use it with an 18650 battery and they have some nice little adapters that thread in. So really, really fucking well designed as always from these guys. We'll check all that out in the up and close before we can do that. Uh-huh, that's right, dickheads. It's a fucking beer time. Another beer from Wild Barrel. This is their Vice Mango Lychee. And like the previous ones, it is a sour Berliner Vice style. A moderate 5.2% alcohol, this one. It is brewed over in San Marcos, California in the United States. Let's just see how she fucking tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink it here. Cause is all that's here. Oh yeah, dickheads. To the bitter end. Nice hazy complexion. Plenty of little giblets floating down in there, so it should have plenty of flavor. Sour and mangoey with a nice sort of uh, tropical lychee aroma. Fucking cheese cunts. Oh fuck, that is good. That is real good. Liking these fucking beers from uh, Wild Barrel. Really, really nice and sour. It's got that dry Berliner sort of uh, feel to it. Loads of mango, loads of lychee. Really good mix and balance between the two. I'm not getting too much mango. I can still taste the fucking lychee in there. Pretty thin and light on the mouth feel. Real refreshing. It's a fairly warm day down here in South Australia and this is going down a fucking treat. So I'm getting the mango and the lychee, but I'm also getting quite a bit of that pineapple. Maybe the sourness and the acidity is bringing some of that on, but pineapple as well as that mango and lychee, that is a real fucking tropical beer. Tasty fucking stuff. Let's pair it up as we do with a fucking liquid. Now, like these wild barrel beers I've been a bit obsessed with, I'm pretty obsessed with this fucking liquid from The Rituals. It's their Dragon Passion and it's their salt water taffy line. So it's a candied dragon fruit and passion fruit and it's fucking good. Really loving the fucking candy element of this one. It's got a, a real sort of lolly feel to it. It doesn't taste like a natural passion fruit or a natural dragon fruit, but that's why I like it. It really tastes like a sweet and it has that really nice sort of almost chewy kind of dry feel to it. They're getting that saltwater taffy kind of thing going on really, really well. I reckon it should pair up pretty fucking good with our mango and uh, lychees. Let's fucking see. Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. The passion fruit mixing in with the mango here is just delightful. Absolutely fucking tropical explosions. Those dry Berliner styles with the mango and the pineapple going fucking just perfectly with the very candied sort of uh, fruit element of this liquid. That is one of my favorite pairings, I reckon, for the last month. That is good. I'm gonna have a fucking third hit, cunts. Yeah, fuck, that is good. What I like about this liquid is even though it's a candy, it's not overly sweet. It definitely has a sweetness to it, but it's not just overpoweringly sweet. Doesn't seem to fuck up my coils at all. And uh, I tell you what, with this beer, I could, I could down this in about 30 seconds, but I'm gonna save it. Anyway, dickheads, let's not waste any more time. Down the oven bloody close, let's check out this mech mod. If you've seen any of the other recent RCM mods, you won't be uh, too surprised by the switch. It is all basically the same, but uh, some really nice, interesting uh, engravings and, uh, and design to this one. And yeah, if you're into lightsabers, you probably like this. Let's get down there and have a sticky beak.
Okie fucking dokie dickers. This is the packaging you'll get your RCM mods in. So I believe that the uh, the Bone Veal or the Bonaville is uh, a, another Infinity, the classic wooden box from RCM. Let's see what you get inside. Well, of course, you'll find your fucking mod, a 2700 battery adapter, an 18650 battery adapter, and a spare spring. But let's get into it. So here she fucking is in a uh, black fading into silver sort of paint job. There are multiple options, quite a few. You've got blues and uh, reds fading into black. They've got straight colors of just black and uh, plenty of others. So uh, yeah, definitely find a flavor for you. We'll start up at the top, shall we? Now you've got a 24 millimeter taper around the platform here and a 27, I think it's 27 at the sort of widest point on the mod. So all of your 24 millimeter addies will look pretty good on here. Your 25s will have just a touch of uh, overhang, but not too bad. It is a hybrid connection. So remember dickheads, with any hybrid mechanical mod, you need to make sure that the pin you're using on your atomizer is hybrid safe. So make sure that the gold portion is sticking out further than the stainless steel threads or whatever color the pin is in the middle. Make sure it is sticking out further than these threads. If it's not, do not use it on a hybrid mechanical mod and never ever use a sub ohm tank on a hybrid mech. Got a bit of branding up the top there, RCM. You've got Infinity. It is a brass construction, the tube, as you can see there underneath the paint, you've got brass. Moving our way down, you have uh, this lovely heat sink fin sort of design. So the whole Bonneville name and uh, theme comes from uh, the film and I suppose the story of Burt Munro in uh, The Fastest Indian, which gives the motorcycle theme. It's not a Star Wars lightsaber theme, dickheads. Uh, I believe the heat sink fins up here are to obviously look a bit like uh, the heat sink fins on the engine and uh, I think this bit here is meant to look like a piston to me that looks very sort of piston shaped this little bit in the middle and also explains the number 35 printed on the bottom which was uh, the number on the bike in the film the fastest Indian so yeah Bonneville Bonneville however you say it but it's a, uh, a motorcycle engine theme that they've got going on here it also feels really comfortable in the hand it's sort of got these two flat sides uh, in the middle there and I find that when you hold it it fits really nicely between your thumb and your index finger and it gives you just a little spot to sort of hold it comfortable height to uh, fire it with your uh, index finger or your pointer finger or whatever fucking finger this one is down the middle one the Rudy <laughs> but uh, I find it's a really nice position for those sort of cutouts but either way I think it's a nice looking fucking mod there obviously this gives you plenty of venting as well should you run into uh, any sort of major fucking troubles with your battery and the paint job they've done on this one again always fucking top notch really really nice thick durable paint I've been taking this out and about been using it a fair bit nothing's chipped or scratched or anything like that and uh, really nice fade from that black into sort of a, uh, a silvery gun metal color. Moving our way down to the bottom, you have your switch or your button, which obviously without a battery in there sort of just slides back into the tube itself. So we'll have a look at that in more detail in a second. To take your battery out, you just grab the bottom here and you've got just a really quick half turn to, to get your uh, button out. I love that uh, threading that they do there. It is quite big and thick uh, and it does mean that it's quick. But when you first get one of these, you may find yourself kind of See, it's going, this one's going in really nicely, but sometimes with the, uh, yeah, so I think they may have, or well, certainly on this one, this feels easier than uh, previous RCMs, which have always had a slightly tricky thread sometimes, where you've got to sort of backspin it and then thread it in, but this one, it does feel a little bit better than I've had in the past, so maybe not really an issue like we've seen before, where it kind of, it does that, and then you've got to kind of find the sweet spot, and if you're having trouble with that, which I have in the past on RCMs, the best thing to do is just kind of start by actually threading it anti-clockwise and then you'll feel that little, that click, and then you know that's the spot where it's gonna thread in. So just something to point out. Now the really cool thing about RCM uh, mods is they have this ring here which allows you to shorten the tube for your 18650s. So if you want to uh, run an 18650, you take this tube off, you then take your battery adapter. And another cool feature about their battery adapters is they actually thread in to the bottom of the uh, the mod. And that way, when you take a battery out, you don't have the adapter coming out with it. You don't have to worry about fucking around with any of that shit. So you just take this bugger here and screw him in. Make sure you're putting this flat side, the non-threaded bit in first. Again, quite bold thread. So just make sure you find that little connection point. And in he goes. 
and you do have that little uh, bit of brass then poking through so that's something to mention but uh yeah really really cool the way they do their uh battery adapters and then you take your switch and the uh, the bottom of the tube and because you've now reduced the height it's ready for an 18650 and you've actually shortened the whole mod by uh you know a good few millimeters which is pretty fucking cool you don't see that on i don't know can't think of many tubes that actually become shorter when you're using a smaller battery. As always, the inside of the tube is really nicely machined, nice and polished, nice and clean when I got it out of the box. No safety features in there, no tube lining or 510 liner, so just be aware this is definitely for the advanced users. Make sure your battery wraps are intact. The 35 on the bottom here, so your button or your switch mechanism slides out of the sort of housing. Again, all brass construction, all perfectly machined. The tolerances on this thing is just perfect it, it slides in with no resistance just gonna make sure you get it on the uh, the right angle so really really top-notch machining as always from rcm so it is the same switch we've seen on uh, more recent infinities you've got the uh, constant contact situation so your battery is going to sit on here and then as you fire it it's going to push this up so this sort of piece here is going to slide in the tube housing and basically connect the cone piece to the uh, the concave uh, side on the inside. So if you wanna have a look, we just thread this out. I believe from previous reviews, this is galvanized brass. I think these contact points here, galvanized brass. As you can see, no arcing whatsoever on the inside there. Really, really nice performance. I've been using this quite a lot uh, over the last week or two and it's not producing any arc marks, which is really nice to see. So you've got the insulator in there, basically insulating this piece from the uh, contact here. So to take apart a little further, you can unscrew this brass section here and there is a little bit of adjustment once we uh, get in there. You can play around with uh, how it's sort of set up. So there's your spring, make sure you don't lose that. You do have a spare, which is always nice. So your spring's in again sitting in an insulator. So the spring is not gonna carry any current given that one side of it is insulated and the other side is sitting in this uh, nice brass button. So out he comes, out comes the uh, insulator that our contact sits in or threads into. And then we have uh, another ring in here, which allows you to sort of lengthen the amount the button is. So if you wanna have a longer button shortening the throw, well, you'd wind this brass section out a little bit so that this guy here threads in a little bit uh, less. And so you're lengthening the overall height of the button, giving you some more sort of tension on the uh, battery and also decreasing the amount of travel that this cone has to make to get to the uh, the contact here. So if you're having trouble with it being a too short a throw, if you're getting uh, auto firing, then what you need to do is take this apart and screw in this brass ring more or less or whatever you like. But if you want it to be a longer throw, then you would screw the brass thing all the way in. We can put it back together and as you can see now, the button itself is shorter and now my button throw is a little bit longer than what it was before. So really nice and sort of versatile the way the button is set up and uh, a really smooth action, very, very smooth. And the spring's a nice tension. It's sort of a medium stiffness. It's not super stiff. It's easy to fire, but not too easy. And I think this fucker just looks awesome with the Barrage RDA with those heatsink fins and this uh, gray drip tip from RNV Designs. Just a, a stunning fucking setup with those three together. But that'll fucking do us, dickheads. I'll see you up top. So there you go, the Boneville or Bonneville, whatever you want to fucking call it. I'm sure it's not Boneville. That doesn't sound like something you name a mod, but either way, what a fucking piece of equipment. Let's just get into the pros and bloody cons. What do I like? What do I dislike? Well, you can probably already tell from the previous RCMs and this one's no different. There's not really a lot of cons with this one. So let's start with the fucking pros. I love this look of it. I like this one. This has got a really nice look to it. A little bit more kind of chilled out than the last one I had, which had the whole basculus thing with the whole scales a little bit more out there. This is a little bit more chilled, but I really like this uh, heat sink fin design. I don't think it really makes a huge difference to the heat reduction, nor does it matter because it doesn't get hot or anything like that. But
but what it does give me is a little bit of uh, fun to play with some sort of heat sink fin style RDAs like this barrage here. I just think it looks really, really good together. So I'm a fan of the aesthetics. Obviously we've got to talk about the clever design and the way that they use those uh, inserts on the inside, the threaded battery adapters. It's something I don't think I've seen another tube mod do. It's really, really good though, because you don't actually have to worry about a sleeve falling out if you're changing batteries. Not that I would use a 2700 or an 18650, I want to use 21s, but if you are into and there are a lot of people in some countries that don't get easy access to 21700s. You can use your 18650s and you've got a little adapter that stays in there properly. It also allows you to reduce the overall height by taking out that bottom ring. And that's something that most tube mods don't do when you use a shorter battery. You're sort of still stuck with the, uh, the overall length of the mod uh, as it was built. But this one actually gives you a little bit of a, uh, a size reduction when you're using a smaller battery. So something that does make a lot of sense and uh, is is really fucking a clever way to do it. Build quality is obviously another thing that Russian custom mods do very well, and this one is no fucking different. Very, very well put together. All of the machining is top notch. The tolerances are great. The threads a little tricky sometimes, but smooth as bloody butter. I love the uh, the switch design. It's got a, a perfect fucking uh, sort of throw for me and it does give you a little bit of adjustment you can kind of play around with it uh, and get it to throw a little bit differently uh, depending on how you line up those internals and performance is once again fucking grouse very very hard hitting not any different i don't think to some of the other rcms that i've had right up there with the best performing tube mods the reactors the fucking nitro v2s your fucking copper kennedys your infinite mods your caveman mods all of those top performing mods this is uh yeah easily on par love it fucking love it it's a good size not bad uh definitely on this sort of uh smaller to medium size uh mech tubes about the same height as a kennedy vindicator and uh, i like a tube of this sort of uh diameter and height tons of different variations to choose from. I've got this sort of gradient black and silver which I'm really enjoying and they've also got a whole bunch of others out there. Your reds, your blues, your greens, you can go straight for a black one. So plenty of choices there and I think that's really good when you've got a mech mod. Not everybody wants the same thing and not every company offers like fucking six or seven different flavors. So I like that. But what do I not fucking like? Well as I hinted earlier, not bloody much on these mods. Russian custom mods rarely have any sort of fuck ups or anything like that. Not that I've ever experienced and this one really is no different. The only thing things that I would point out are maybe some slightly subjective cons. Uh, things like the 510 platform, it is 24 millimeters. I would prefer to have a 25. I'd rather see a step down from my 24 to a, a 25 millimeter platform rather than using a 25 millimeter RDA on this and having a little bit of overhang. It doesn't bother me on this one so much because I do like the barrage on here probably the most out of my RDAs. But if you do like your 25 millimeter RDAs, you will have a little tiny bit of overhang. And I personally just think a 25 millimeter platform these days, given how many 25 millimeter toppers we have, is maybe just a little bit more versatile, but quite subjective, really. I'm just nitpicking. But apart from that, I don't really have anything to fucking whinge about on this thing. As I said, performance, build quality, design, all right up there and uh, very, very happy. So what are these fuckers gonna set you back? Well, I can't put any links in the description, thanks to bloody YouTube, but if you do a bit of a Google, you'll find the RCM website. They're selling for $220 to $240 US, depending on which paint job you go for. I think some of the more, uh, you know, exotic two-tone two things are a 240 and then the basic colors are uh, 220 which is very reasonable when you compare it to the rest of the market something that's made in russia of this quality right up there with very very expensive mods and i don't think 220 is uh, is a crazy price certainly not one for the budget vapor but if you do like the finer mech mods then uh, you definitely got to look at picking up an rcm because they are just fucking awesome but that will about fucking do me, dickheads. Not much more to say on this one. If you want to check out what this Muppet gets up to outside of the YouTube videos, I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description. If you want to support my channel, please do hit the like, hit the subscribe button. They always help me out. But if you want to keep me behind the lens, then hit some of my support links. As I say every video, I run an independent channel. And what that means is I don't accept any payments for making these videos. There's no sneaky sponsorships or jumping the queue fees or any of that kind of crap. I want to make sure you're getting a truly unbiased opinion on a product. But to keep doing that, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page. Page. There's special content and vlogs on there each week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as special Facebook group and Zoom rooms and other things that we do together as our little special community. And it's those supporters that keep me doing my fucking thing. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub me fucking dicks off, all your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what you're vaping on, whether it's made in Russia or made in China, cheap and cheerful or fucking exotic. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. <laughs>